So hey guys, how are you all? Welcome to, so we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto left Konoha after Kiba Inazuka betrayal. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. Dragons aren't real. They're just a fantasy creature that was made up to make myths seem more fun. Those are words that forever rung in the head of Naruto Uzumaki as a child. He had always been a fan of stories where a knight goes on a quest to defeat a dragon for the sake of his kingdom, and then returns to marry the princess and become the king. But what fascinated him were the dragons. Large beings, capable of flight, expelling huge torrents of flame, and wiping out a large army in an instant. Something like that, to him, would be something incredible. To have something like that on his side. Dot the idea enthralled him. And that's why he was never able to believe the words of anyone who tried to tell him that. Even as he grew up, and gradually began to grow out of his, believing fairy tales are real, phase, deep within his heart, he always believed that dragons were real. Even now, at 17 years old, when he had saved the whole world and was the host for the nine-tailed beasts. Even Gyuki, whom he successfully extracted from B, and was the successor of the Sage of the Six Paths, he still believed in dragons. On one particular day, Naruto learned just how much there was to the world. It was an average day. He went to Tsunade so she could check up on his recently made arm, created from Hashirama Senju's DNA. She marveled at how the biju has practically converted the DNA to perfectly match his own, making the arm his, and then ran a few tests before sending him away. Honestly, Naruto sighed. Why must she keep checking up on me? I've been like this for a few months. A thought struck his head. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to pick up Hinata in ten minutes. I'll go pick her up early, that'll make her happy. Naruto let out a brilliant smile. He had been with Hinata for about a month now, not too long after the fourth shinobi war ended, and he couldn't be happier. He felt so stupid for all those times that he had chased after Sakura when the real love of his life had been there all along. But he had her now, and that's what mattered. He hummed happily as he walked to the Hayuga compound. The guards let him in without any trouble, and he walked to Hinata's room. He stood outside, taking a quiet breath, and he was about to knock on the door when he heard a noise. Raising an eyebrow, he pressed his ear to the door. Dot and his heart shattered. Ooh, Kiba kun, Hanada's voice cried out, more. Yeah, babe, came the Inazuka's voice. I'll make you scream out my name. Naruto's head dropped, and his hand clenched. Is something wrong, Naruto? The voice of Matabi, the two tailed Hellcat, rang out in his mind. Naruto's thoughts were silent, but the moans of Hanada and Kiba rang out in his mind. The biju had varied reactions. Shukaku was wanting to slaughter Kiba for hurting his friend. Matabi wanted to tear them both to shreds and castrate Kiba. Isobu wanted to drown them both in water. Sun wanted to make them burn in lava. Kakuo wanted to ram his horns up their asses and kill them. Saiken wanted to poison them with her acid and make them scream in agony as they died. Shomei wanted to stab them repeatedly with her scales which were very painful to be hit by. Yuki wanted to electrocute them slowly and painfully. But Kurama's reaction was the worst. He roared loudly in pure malice. Naruto was his first and closest friend. How dare that bitch and that mud do that to him? He wanted to hit them both with a low powered bijudama and then take his times ripping them both to shreds. Kit, the nine tailed demon's voice rang out. Give me control for a minute. Naruto didn't even argue, letting his consciousness fade into his mindscape, where eight biju comforted him, and Kurama took control. Outwardly, Naruto's cerulean blue eyes turned blood red, filled with anger, a black slit running down the middle. He kicked the door down. Hey, Kurama growled, Hanada and Kiba looking at him with wide eyes. En Naruto ku, Hanada began to talk, but Kurama's glare cut her off. Don't you fucking talk to me, he yelled. After all we've been through, after all I've done for you, this is how you repay me. He was acting as Naruto, it wouldn't do to have everyone know that Naruto could swap with him at will. Don't you yell at her, Kiba barked, but he shrunk back when Kurama's gaze fell on him. They could sense the anger and malice rolling off him. Don't even get me started on you, Kurama screamed at him. We were friends you mutt. You were my best friend, just after Sasuke and Sakura. And you do this to me? I fucking trusted you? En Naruto-kun, let me explain, Hinata tried to speak, but Kurama wouldn't have any of it. The biju's eyes flared. There's no need to explain, you chose this mutt over me, all because I wasn't ready to have sex with you. You'd think after loving me for as long as you fucking did, you would have learned about patience, but no, Kurama turned away. Goodbye, Hanada. Hanada felt a pang of hurt at the lack of Chan that Naruto said so lovingly. W wait, Naruto kun. Don't bother, Kurama growled out. He reached into his pocket, pulling out the most beautiful ring Hanada had ever seen. 
It was simple, yet beautiful. The ring was gold, embed with rubies and sapphires, with a single, gorgeous emerald embed at the top. You know what this was? This was my engagement ring for you, I was going to propose today. Hanada was trembling, and Kiba had never felt more guilty than he had now. He wasn't proud, he knew what he was right now, below even scum. But you've just thrown that down the drain, he told her. He gripped the ring. You don't deserve it. You never will. You never deserved my love, Hanada. And you'll never have it again. This is goodbye you Hyuga slut. We're done. Forever. With that said, Kurama stuffed the ring back in his pocket and walked away, out of the Hyuga compound. But Kurama never noticed someone, who had watched the whole scene with wide, shocked eyes, follow him out the compound. Konohagakir, 3.20 p.m., by the time Kurama had returned to Naruto's house, the blonde was still inside of his subconscious. Kurama sat in a cross-legged position and began to meditate, returning to the subconscious. How is he? He asked in concern. Matabi shook her head. He's not good Nisan. He just keeps staring blankly into space with a dead look on his face. Gyuki covered his head with his hands. Please no, you sound like B. Not the time Gyuki, Shukaku growled. Right, sorry. Come on Naruto. Kakuo tried to console him. Who needs her? She clearly didn't deserve it if she did that. You're way too good for her anyway. Naruto didn't speak. Come on, son growled. Where's the little gaki that was willing to free us, the biju, and be our friends? Naruto still said nothing. Where's the kid who saved Gara? Shukaku demanded. Nothing. Where's the one who helped you, Tataka? Saiken asked. Nothing. Pathetic, Kurama growled. That got Naruto's attention. He turned to Kurama, his eyes wide. That's right, Kurama confirmed. You, Naruto Uzumaki, are pathetic. You faced Zabuza Momochi, the demon of the hidden mist, without fear. You took on his apprentice, Haku. You faced a psycho Gara. You beat the Mutt. You beat Pain. You beat Obito. You beat Madara. You beat Kagaya. You beat Sasuke, your longtime rival, and each time you were strong. You are not Naruto Uzumaki, a pathetic man WHO cries over his slut of a girlfriend cheating on him. By doing so, you're letting her win. You are not that person. You are Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, son of Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki, the demon of Konoha, the savior of the leaf, the slayer of gods, friend of the nine biju, heir of Hagoromo Otsutsuki the sage of the six paths, now get the fuck up. Naruto was silent, before he stood, a fire of determination in his eyes. Thank you Kurama, I needed that. The Kayubi no Yoko smirked. Anytime Gaki, that's what friends are for. Naruto looked to each of the biju in turn. Shukaku, Matabi, Isobu, Son Goku, Kakuo, Saiken, Shomei, Yuki, Kurama. He bowed his head. Thank you. The biju all smiled at their host. But, Naruto spoke, catching their attention. I. I can't be in this place anymore. This world has caused me so much pain. Do any of you know? Dot any way to leave? The biju were silent, until Kakuo spoke up. I. I'll admit. I do know a way. The biju looked to the five tails in surprise. The sage bestowed upon me powers over steam, or rather the boil release, but he also granted me the ability to travel through dimensions, however I could not travel through them unless I had a host. And I deemed none of my hosts worthy to travel through them, but you deserve to, Naruto. Naruto bowed his head. Thank you, Kakuo, I owe you. Kakuo smiled. You don't owe me anything. If at all, you're doing us a favor by mentioning this. When you finally died, we would be released and most likely sealed again. I'll make preparations for the jump. You pack. Naruto nodded, thanking the friends that would never leave him, as he left his mindscape. When he opened his eyes, he was staring into the lavender eyes of a Hyuga. He nearly jumped back in surprise, thinking it was Hanada. But the sight of brown hair made him know otherwise, it wasn't Hanada. It was Hanabi. Hana, he began, but a finger to his lips stopped him. Just, Hanada's little sister spoke. Just let me do this. She leaned in, and captured Naruto's lips in a kiss. Naruto's eyes widened in shock and he didn't move for a while as Hanabi the sister of the girl who betrayed him kept kissing him. He slowly eased into it, returning the kiss. After five minutes of making out, Naruto broke the kiss. Why wa. Hanabi blushed, before speaking. I, I've loved you for a long time. Ever since you beat Neji and gave your speech about fate, I've been in love with you. But I, my sister was in love with you and I wanted her to be happy. Naruto nodded. I, I see. Well, I'm not with her anymore. I know, Hanabi told him. I, I saw the whole thing. Ah, 
was Naruto's reply. Hanabi hugged him. I, I want you Naruto-kun. I don't want to be without you, I'll do anything. I'll let you date other women, just please. I want to be with you. Naruto's eyes softened. He suspected Hanabi knew that he had to take multiple wives. Well, not in a new dimension. His eyes widened as a thought struck him. He was willing to put his faith in love one more time. Hanabi, Naruto spoke, do you want to leave with me? Hanabi looked up at him. What? Naruto gulped. He explained to her about Kokuo's ability to cross through dimensions, and how he was going to be leaving the elemental nations, and I want you to come with me, he told her. Hanabi's eyes widened. Why you do? Yes, Naruto nodded. I, I'm willing to put my faith in you. Will you leave your family, everything you've ever known, to be with me? Hanabi gulped as she thought. On one hand, she abandons everything, her family, her friends, everything she had grown around. On the other hand, dot she could finally be with Naruto, who she'd been in love with for five years, since she was ten. I'll go with you. Naruto smiled. Meet me here at seven tonight. Tell anyone who asks that Hinata cheated on me and you decided to come and comfort me. Hanabi nodded, giving Naruto a quick peck on the cheek. Goodbye Naruto-kun. I'll see you at seven. Naruto blushed lightly, and he nodded. Why yeah, you too. Hanabi smiled, getting up, making her breasts bounce slightly, she turned and walked away, her hips swaying slightly as she walked away. Naruto blushed, and was really thanking his lucky stars. Are you sure you can trust her? Matabi asked in concern. Naruto smiled softly. Yeah, he said. Yeah, I think I can. Konohagakure. 3.40 p.m. Hanabi happily skipped into the Hyuga compound. A smile on her face as she went to pack. Halfway to her room, she was stopped by her father, Hiyashi Hayuga. Hello father, she bowed. How may I help you? It's Hanada, Hiyashi told her, she is very upset, do you know why? Hanabi's face became sour. She cheated on Naru I mean Uzumaki-san with Kiba and Azuka, and he walked in on them when he came to pick up Nei-chan for their date. He yelled at her in anger and revealed that he was going to propose to her today, and he broke up with her on the spot and left. Hiyashi looked shocked. Hanada did that. She's been in love with Naruto since she was a child. Dot why would she do that? Hanabi shrugged, coming up with an excuse. Perhaps one of the elders put her in a genjutsu. You know how they hate it when our people date outside of the clan. They've always thought of Naruto as if he were a demon, even after he saved the village. The clan head's eyes became dark. It wouldn't be the first time they attempted that. I will go speak to them. You can have the rest of the day off Hanabi. Hanabi nodded, smirking once her father was far enough. Oh don't worry father. She whispered as she walked into her room and closed the doors, soon enough, I'll be going on a long vacation with my Naruto-kun. She shivered in anticipation as she began packing things into her bag and sealing them inside so she could carry more. She sighed contently as she packed, thinking of spending the rest of her days with Naruto. Konohagakure, 6.40 pm, Naruto was tapping his fingers against his table nervously, sweating slightly. He had packed everything he thought he would need to. Food, a lot of cash, all his life savings in a seal all his clothes, several tents, a lot of weapons, Jiraiya's Icha Icha paradise books, so they could get money fast cause they sold so well, and a lot of scrolls so that he could continue training. He had his nine senses in his head, so that was fine. You see, after sealing the nine biju inside of him, they had all modified Naruto's body slightly to match their needs. Shukaku had made Naruto's body more durable and given him control over sand and gave him the magnet release. Matabi had made his dick bigger, much to the embarrassment of the nine biju, though Naruto never got why, and gave him an affinity over fire, a very strong one. Isobu had made Naruto's body more durable as well, and made his mild affinity over water much stronger. Son Goku had made Naruto more flexible, and made it easier for him to combine earth and fire to make lava. Kakuo had given him the boil release. Saiken gave Naruto the ability to pull fresh water out of the air, both to drink and to use for jutsu. Shomei had given him a pair of wings so he could fly, though all the beasts hated the beetle wings, and changed them to something cooler, much to Chomei's annoyance, Yuki gave Naruto a very strong lightning affinity, and the ability to produce ink. And finally, Kurama increased his healing factor and gave him the earth release. But, another odd thing had happened. Due to the chakra of all nine biju combining inside of him, he had accidentally recreated the Jubi's chakra, and ended up gaining the wood release thanks to it. Along with that, he gained the ability to absorb chakra. But all the beasts, as well as Naruto, were unsure as to whether or not Naruto would gain the Rinnegan or the Rinne Sharingan. Is the portal ready to make Kakuo? Naruto asked, a little nervously. Yep, Kakuo spoke up, we just need to wait for Hanabi to Ari. 
Kid, Karama growled. The slut is here. She brought the Yamanaka and the Banshee with her too. Naruto's eyes narrowed slightly. He slowly got up, putting his back out of sight so they wouldn't be suspicions. He heard a knock on the door. Coming. He walked to the door and opened it. Oh, it's your three. He was met by the angry faces of Ino and Sakura, and the sad face of Hinata. Can I help you? Yes, you can Naruto Baka, Ino growled. How could you just break up with Hinata? Yeah, Sakura agreed. How could you just break her heart like that? In her own home? Naruto's eyes flashed red. How could I? How could I? I guess she didn't tell you about how she fucked Kiba behind my back. Like she would ever do that, Ino yelled. She's loved you since we were kids. Why would she eve? She noticed the look on Hinata's face and stopped. H hey, Hinata. Sakura looked at Hinata, seeing the look on her face as well. Wait, Hinata? Did you really? Tears fell and Hinata nodded. Looks like she didn't tell you the whole story, Naruto growled. I caught her in bed with Kiba, ten minutes before we were supposed to leave for our date. Do you know how that hurt? Please Naruto-kun, Hinata yelled. I'm sore, I don't want your apologies, Naruto said coldly. The fact remains Hinata. You did it. And you too, he glared at Sakura and Ino. You actually believed I would do something so cruel without reason. All of you get lost, I don't want to see you for the rest of the day. B but Naru. Sakura tried to speak. Leave, Naruto ordered, and the three Kunoichi quickly ran away, one crying, two feeling bad, and all three feeling guilty. Bitches be crazy. Naruto mumbled. For some, odd reason, all the biju glared at their container. Naruto closed the door, sitting on the couch. He twitched nervously. Where's Hanabi? Calm down Kit, Kurama said, though sounded a little reluctant to talk now. You said to arrive at 7, not 6.40 p.m. Naruto sighed. I know I'm just, nervous, he wasn't nervous about being caught. He was excited. He was shaking in anticipation. He would finally be leaving, maybe going to a place he would be acknowledged without needing to prove himself over and over. And that made him happy. And with Hanabi beside him, it would be just that much better. Konohagakure, 6.50 p.m. Hanabi was walking towards Naruto's house. A bag slung over her shoulder. She is humming a tune happily as she walked along. Just ten more minutes and I'll be leaving with Naruto-kun, she thought dreamily. She sighed contently, but her smile faltered when she saw Hinata sobbing on a bench, with Sakura and Ino trying to console her. She could have walked past. Dot but her curiosity got the better of her. She walked over. What's wrong Nei chan Hinata looked at Hanabi with teary eyes. I went over to apologize to Naruto-kun earlier. Hanabi's fist clenched, but nobody noticed. B but he wouldn't accept my apology, and he sent me away she cried into her hands more. Sakura nodded. I mean, I know Hinata cheated on him. Dot but he didn't need to be so mean. She frowned. Do you think Kurama is influencing him? It's possible, Ino admitted, but he would never let us try and convince him. He trusts Kurama and the other biju more than the Hokage. Hanabi bit her cheek. This talk was annoying her, so she decided to tell a little white lie. Look Nei chan she spoke up. I've got a B-rank mission with Naruto for a few weeks. I'll try and convince him to take you back, but I make no promises. Hanada looked at Hanabi and sniffled. A arigato imaudo. Hanabi nodded, turning and walking towards Naruto's house. With a dark smirk on her lips. Sorry Nei-chan, but Naruto-kun is mine. And I'm never letting you have him. With that, she began to run to Naruto's house, so they could both leave and be free of this world at last. Konohagakure, 7 p.m., Naruto was pacing in his apartment nervously his back already slung over his shoulder. He was wearing more normal clothes. He wore a black shirt with a blood-red jacket, a pair of blue pants called jeans, and some weird orange shoes that were called sneakers. He wore a pair of black gloves that felt rather leathery, and wore a necklace with nine small magatama strung along it. One for each biju. You need to calm down Tomcat, Matabi told him. It only just got to seven. I'm sure that she's going to be here any minute. You're right, Naruto thought. I'm just overreacting. Kakuo, will the portal close behind us? Yes, the dolphin horse promised. The sage traveled to another world once and showed me how it was done. The portal closed behind him as soon as he left. I'm not as experienced as him, so I've no idea where you are going to end up. The technology used there may be far more advanced than here. People may not even be able to harness their chakra like you humans can in this world. Naruto nodded in acceptance. I don't mind that, I just want to get away from here, for good. He heard a knock on the door and nearly jumped for joy. He hurried over and opened it. Hanabi stood there, in all her glory. She was wearing a brown tank top, and no bra, so her large breasts jiggled a lot, a white jacket, 
A pair of jeans similar to Naruto's except they hugged her tight, making her ass look large and sexy, along with her own pair of sneakers. Her brown hair was tied back in a ponytail, which just made her more beautiful in Naruto's eyes. A bag was slung over her back. She hurried in, closing the door behind her and gave Naruto a kiss, which he gladly returned. Sorry I'm a little late sweetie, she apologized. I ran into her along with Sakura and Ino on the way here. Naruto frowned. What did you say to them? Hanabi giggled. I asked what happened when Hinata was crying and they told me. So I made a lie and said we were going on a B-rank mission and I tried to convince you while we were away. She snorted. Like I would ever. She had her chance and she ruined it. Naruto nodded. Good. Kakuo is ready to make the portal when we're ready. He stared into her eyes. Are you sure about this Hanabi? Once we leave, we probably can't come back. I'm sure Naruto-kun, she said to him, making him blush at the name. I want to be with you. I have no friends here, only you. I've hated it here for as long as I can remember, and I want to be free. So please, let's just leave already. Naruto nodded. Okay Hanabi, he pulls out a piece of paper. We'll leave a letter for them though, just in case. Hanabi nodded, sitting at the table and Naruto sat beside her. Go ahead. Naruto nodded and he began to write, to whoever reads this letter. I have had enough of being this village's prisoner and play toy. I was treated horribly as a child, without a single ounce of love. And just when I thought I had found it, finally, it was stomped on when I found her cheating on me. Well I've had enough of it. I am leaving this village now, the elemental nations for good. Do not try and find us, because you never will. From, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, lover of Hanabi Hayuga. Naruto slid the letter over to Hanabi and she began to write. To whoever finds this letter, I've had to sit by and watch as the man I love has risked his life for this village over and over again, but never receive recognition. When he started dating my sister, it seriously hurt me, but I was happy for the two of them, but now, I know what this village is really like after seeing him catch my sister in bed with another man. And so, I am leaving with the man I love, because we have had it with this village. Don't try and find us, you'll never see us again. From, Hanabi Hayuga, lover of Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Naruto smiled and folded up the letter, placing it on the table. He stood up, and Hanabi clung to his arm. He took a breath. Are you ready Hanabi? Yes, she said softly. I'm ready. Naruto held out a hand, and Kakuo took control, as shown from his irises turning into a more solid turquoise blue. Jikuden. Sunpo Choyaku, space-time release. Dimension leap. A crack appeared in the air in front of them and slowly began to spread until they were staring at a black portal, dotted with white lights. Naruto retook control, holding Hanabi's hand. Let's go, Hanabi. Hanabi smiled. Okay, Naru-kun. Naruto picked up Hanabi by her bridal side, making her blush, and dove into the portal, the crack closing behind them, the pair leaving the elemental nations behind. Konohagakure, 8.30 p.m., Kakashi Hitaki, recently instated Hokage of Konoha, was sitting at his desk doing paperwork. Well, his shadow clones were doing paperwork, he was reading Icha Icha Paradise. And now that he had both of his eyes, he could enjoy it twice as much. He giggled. Okurumu chan, you naughty, naughty girl, he heard his door being opened and quickly put the book away. Sasuke burst into the room, the tomo in his Rinnegan eye spun furiously, and his eyes were red from crying. Kakashi, we have a problem. Kakashi got serious instantly. If Sasuke weren't calling him, Scarecrow, then something was wrong. What is it? Naruto. Sasuke told him. Naruto has disappeared. When I got back to the village about 10 minutes ago, I couldn't sense his energy signature, and I know that he's off of missions for another three weeks. So I went and checked his house and I found this. He took out the letter that Naruto and Hanabi had left, and placed it in front of Kakashi. Kakashi picked it up, staring at it as he read it. Dot and tears started to fall. I'm sorry Sasuke. Kakashi said. But he's long gone by now. Sasuke fell to his knees. Damn it. Dot why Naruto? Kakashi turned away, holding his hand over his face as he cried. Sasuke. Go home and rest. We'll make the announcement about Naruto and Hanabi in a week. Sasuke nodded, not trusting himself to speak. He got up and walked to the door, pounding it head against it softly. This is what we deserve, isn't it Kakashi? Sasuke said in a quiet voice. We treated him like dirt for so long. Dot and he finally found love in Hanada only for it to be crushed. This is our punishment for being cruel right? Kakashi didn't speak for a moment. Yes, I see. Sasuke opened the door, closing it behind him. Kakashi held a hand over his eyes. Anbu. A masked Shinbi appeared, kneeling in front of the desk. 
Go get all of Naruto's old friends. Dot and Hiyashi Hayuga. They'll want to hear this. The cat masked Anbu nodded, barely containing her own tears as she vanished in a whirlwind of leaves. I had a really good time, Issei, a black haired girl smiled at a brown haired boy as they arrived at a fountain in the park. The brown haired boy Issei Hyodo smiled back at the girl. Anytime, Yuma chan. I was more than happy to help you out. The girl smiled. Then, could you do me a favor? Sure, Issei said, a small perverse grin coming onto his face. Could you please die for me? There was a silence before Issei laughed nervously. What, I don't think I heard you right. I could have sworn you just said you wanted me to die for you. Yes, Yuma gained a dark smirk as she shifted. She grew taller, her breasts growing bigger. Her clothes chained, only thick, black bands covering her breasts and her pussy and asshole. A spear appeared in her hand as she flew up, black wings sprouting from her back. W8. Issei yelled, taking a step back. A spear made of pure light appeared in her hand. She threw it and it impaled Issei's stomach. His eyes grew wide as blood poured out his stomach blood falling out his mouth as he fell backwards, landing on his back hard. His eyes were wide as a puddle of blood formed around him. Sorry, the woman said in a sing-song voice. But you've got a powerful sacred gear, so you're a threat to our plans. I decided to take it upon myself to eliminate you. Sacred. Gear? Issei thought. I did have a nice date, she smiled. But this is goodbye now, enjoy he. Without warning a voice spoke from above her. S-E-N-P-O. J-I-T-O-N. Rasengan. Sage Art. Magnet Release. Spiraling Sphere. The black-winged woman barely had time to look up before an orb of raw power slammed into her gut and sent her crashing into the ground. Ah! You bastard! Yuma screamed before she started to get up. Dot and was met with a pair of lavender eyes. Go to sleep bitch, the girl spat. Hake. Adan Supo, A trigrams. Pressure point strike. Her hands glowed with a blue light and she struck the winged woman in the neck, causing her to fall to unconsciousness. A blonde haired man with whisker marks on each cheek landed beside her. 100 feet in the air was not a nice place for the portal to drop us off, he grumbled. And coming into the fight was not what I wanted, Hanabi. You're telling me Naru kun, she sighed. A crimson glow came from behind them. The pair turned around to be met with the shocked face of a busty and beautiful red haired girl, whose emerald eyes were wide. Naruto did the intelligent thing. He raised his arm with an awkward smile. Um, hi? Rias Gramary liked to think of herself as a composed woman. After all, as the king of a peerage, and the little sister of the demon king, she was raised to be as such. She had kept her composure when it came to dealing with her brother Sirzex. She kept her composure when going to high class meals with her parents. She even kept her composure, barely, when she found out she was going to be married to Riser Phoenix. But even she could not keep her composure after seeing what should have been impossible. She had appeared just as the fallen angel had her eyes closed and was going on about how she had a great date with Issei and how she took it upon herself to kill him, when she heard a yell of Senpo, Jiton, Rasengan, and suddenly a blonde boy had slammed something into the fallen angel's stomach and sent her crashing into the ground. If that weren't strange enough, a brown haired girl had appeared out of nowhere as the boy landed and had knocked out the fallen angel with a single strike. Then the boy had walked over to the girl and the two had spoken for a moment before looking to her. The blonde raised an arm and waved slightly, um, hi? Rias just stood there, gaping like a fish. She's using the one jutsu all civilians use, the brown haired girl noticed. Naruto kun, what should we do? Eliminate her. Rias paled at that. As strong as she believed she was, she could practically feel the power rolling off them in waves. The girl was strong but the blonde Naruto seemed to be on another plane of existence. The name, Maelstrom, really did suit him. His power was its namesake. A whirlpool of absolute power waiting to be unleashed. No need to be hasty Hanabi, Naruto chided the girl. He glanced to the fallen angel, who was now bound thanks to his attack. Um. Rias spoke up, getting their attention. Could you, wait before you attack me? Hanabi looked to Naruto, who shrugged. Sure, Rias was surprised, but didn't show it. She held a hand over Issei, as if measuring something. She raised an eyebrow. Eight pawns. Impressive. She stood up, and eight blood red pawn pieces appeared in front of her. Naruto raised an eyebrow at what she was doing. The pawns all hovered above Issei's body. I command you in my name, Rias Gremory, to be reborn into my house. You, my pawn, shall be delighted with your new life. The pawns lowered, sinking into Issei's chest. A flash of red light occurred and Naruto suddenly felt Issei's power rise, which caused him to cock an eyebrow. Rias picked up Issei, 
whose wounds were all magically healed, and dropped him into a red sort of circle that he vanished into. The red head then turned to Naruto and Hanabi, now, would you like to talk? Naruto looked to Hanabi, who shrugged, then looked back to Rias and shrugged as well, I just have a question. And what's that? Rias asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto grinned cheekily. Got any ramen? Kuo Academy, 9.30 pm. So let me get this straight, the red-haired beauty spoke, her eyebrow twitching. You two are from an alternate dimension? Yep. Where you are able to use the special power that only yokai are supposed to be able to use called chakra. Yep. And the majority of your people are, shinobi, who use this power. Yep. And you've gone through four feet great wars, yep. Did you honestly expect me to believe that? The gremory deadpanned. Naruto shrugged. He was sat on the couch with Hanabi beside him, an arm wrapped around her waist and her arms around his neck. On the ground in front of him was the fallen angel from before, who was still bound and unconscious. You make it sound like being a devil is so believable as well. The nine demons in his mind yelled, Hey, but we provided more than enough evidence. Yes, Rias sighed. I am more than aware, I did hear you yell Senpo. Jishin. Rosin. Rias's eyes widened. Senpo. Sage Arts. You use Senjutsu? Naruto blinked in surprise. I'm surprised you have that here, since a lot of people in our world didn't know about Senjutsu until the summon animals tell them to special people to keep a secret which I failed at horribly but yes, I am the second toad sage of Mount Mayoboku. Normally that girl would have died from my attack, but I held back, a lot. Rias gulped, rather loudly. If sitting in front of her was a Senjutsu user, join my peerage. Her eyes had a fire of determination. A chance like this was too good to pass up. No, Naruto told her, Hanabi nodding in agreement. But why? Rias pressed. She was not passing up a chance to get two people this strong into her peerage. She needed them for if she got a chance to get out of her engagement to Riser. Because we aren't interested, Hanabi spoke up. If I join any peerage, it will be Naruto's. And as far as I know, he isn't a devil. Yeah, Kurama and the other eight Biju chuckled nervously, about that. Naruto's eyes narrowed dangerously and his chakra spiked. Rias suddenly fell to the ground, finding it difficult to breath. Hanabi held her chest, but she was used to it. However, Naruto's chakra was so powerful. What did you do? Naruto asked in a dark tone. Matabi gulped. She decided to talk. When we made all of those changes to your body, we may have completely accidentally made you a demon like us, except you have a physical body with flesh and blood instead of being a construct of chakra, so you're actually so close to this world's devils that you could pass for one. Naruto took a deep breath as his chakra receded. We will talk about this later, Naruto told them, and they all nodded, too afraid to say otherwise. They might have been stronger than Naruto, but he had a portion of their chakra all to himself, as well as the wood release bloodline, which meant he could suppress their chakra as well. Naruto looked to Rias, who was getting her breath back as she slowly got up and sat on her chair. Care to? Explain? She asked. Hanabi let go of her chest, but was rubbing her legs together. Naruto had gotten her horny from releasing all that power, which was a major attraction for her but she wouldn't ask him to fuck her. They were far too early in the relationship for it to happen so soon. Certainly, Naruto grumbled. I have nine demons sealed inside of my body. Oh, and they accidentally turned me into a devil. Rias looked shocked. This person. Dot had nine demons sealed inside of his body. If he had that kind of power she would never be able to reincarnate him as a devil, he would be far too strong. And Hanabi was out of the question, since she was completely devoted to Naruto. Dot she nearly cursed. Naruto sighed. I guess I'll have to blend into devil society now. This sucks. He grumbled again, in annoyance. Hanabi just hugged him more tightly. I'll have to take you to see Ajuka Beelzebub as soon as possible, she told him. With your kind of power, you could easily be an ultimate class devil, and all high class devils and above have a peerage. Naruto frowned. He really didn't like the idea of making people his slaves, so he would just treat them as family. I guess that's fair, he relented. Can we go in a few days though? I want to adjust to this world. Rias nodded, then smiled. You're going to have to go to school, you know. Naruto nearly screamed. Scratch that. He did. F u u u u u u c c c k k k k. Too bad they also didn't realize that Naruto spiking his chakra alerted every supernatural being on Earth, Heaven, Hell, and Purgatory that he existed. 7:50 a.m. Naruto Uzumaki groaned as he sat up slowly scratching his stomach underneath his shirt as the covers fell off the top half of his body. He no longer wore his headband, so his hair was shadowing his eyes. His cerulean blue eyes looked dull, and he covered his mouth as he yawned. Ah! 
Fucking Biju and they're fucking making me into a devil, he groaned. He looked to his left and saw his girlfriend, Hanabi Hayuga, laying at his side. She had teased him before, as they were going to bed, but she promised him that she wouldn't try and have sex with him until he was ready, which he was thankful for. She only wore her brown tank top, which made her C borderline D cup breasts look a lot bigger than usual from his angle, and a pair of orange panties. Orange. Naruto's willpower had nearly crumbled when he had seen them. He smiled at her sleeping face and brushed a strand of hair out of her eyes. She shifted slightly, scooting closer to his warm touch. He chuckled lightly, shaking her gently. Hanabi, he spoke softly into her ear. Come on, it's time to wake up. Five more minutes. The former Hyuga heiress groaned loudly, opening her lavender eyes a little bit. We don't have five more minutes, Naruto Tut, we have school. Hanabi groaned louder. All the more reason not to wake up. Naruto laughed and climbed out of bed. I don't like it any more than you do Hanabi, but we need to go, and look on the bright side. What bright side? Naruto looked at her, you get to be in my class, since you're easily smarter than a second year student, according to the tests Rias had us take yesterday. This seemed to cheer up Hanabi a bit, as she smiled lightly and giggled. Yes, that is a bright side Naru-kun. She climbed out of bed as well, causing Naruto to blush lightly. She giggled, but didn't tease him about it, she walked over to the wardrobe and opened it. There were several copies of the school uniform in there, some were male, the others were female. Hanabi reached and grabbed a female one. She slid on the skirt first, zipping it up, before she turned away from Naruto and lifted up her tank top, taking it off. What? She may have loved him and teased him, but he wasn't allowed to see her boobs fully yet. She put on an orange bra to match her panties, then slid on the school shirt, doing up the buttons. The jacket was slid on next, followed by a pair of thigh-high black stockings, and her shoes. She stood up and looked at Naruto, who blushed, thinking she looked great, she did a little twirl. How'd I look? You look beautiful, he said honestly, making her blush and giggle. Naruto smiled before he walked over to the wardrobe and pulled out his uniform. He took of his tank top, making Hanabi blush at how ripped he was, before he slid on a different, black shirt with nine magatama on the back that bore each biju's favorite color, before he then slid on the school shirt without doing the buttons, and then the jacket. Next came the pants, and finally his black socks and shoes. He stood up, and shouldered his bag. Hanabi picked up hers and wrapped his arms around his, resting his head on his arm. Ready to go? Hanabi nodded. As long as I'm with you, I'm always ready. Naruto smiled, and the two left their house which Naruto had bought in the dead of night thanks to how much money he had and began to head towards the school. In the basement of the house, the fallen angel Rainer was screaming in absolute bliss as she was trapped in a genjutsu curtsy of Kurama where she was fucked repeatedly by millions of Naruto's. Needless to say, she would be calling him, Naruto-sama, for the rest of her life. Good thing it was a soundproof basement, otherwise the neighbors would have been woken up very early that night. Kuo Academy. 8.20 AM. Naruto and Hanabi walked into the school, Hanabi still clinging to him for all he was worth, and Naruto just smiling softly and patting her head. Almost every girl that saw the two walking together so affectionately was jealous, and the guys were jealous that he was dating someone as hot as Hanabi. Naru-kun, Hanabi whispered. They're staring. Let them, Naruto told her. They can all know I've got the hottest girlfriend in school. Hanabi giggled. You're such a flirt. Is this why all those girls blushed when you spoke to them? Like Shien and Koyuki? Naruto shrugged. I wouldn't know. I was still chasing after Sakura at that point. Hanabi gagged. How could you like that? I was young and stupid, Naruto told her. He glanced out the corner of his eye, seeing the brown haired boy from the day before. He lowered his voice. Remember what Rias asked us to do? Hanabi nodded as she recalled the conversation from the night before. Flashback. So, you turned that brown haired kid into a devil? Naruto asked her with a raised eyebrow. Yes, Rias told him. That is how the evil piece system works. We use chess pieces to reincarnate people into devils. People? Hanabi asked. Not just humans, theoretically speaking, it is possible to reincarnate any living thing into a devil. It hasn't been tested on an angel, but fallen angels and yokai have successfully made the change, Rias explained. And what exactly do you want us to do? Naruto asked. I want you to watch Issei. I am exceedingly busy, as is my peerage, and we don't have any time to do it. We plan on telling Issei the truth tomorrow, but I'm not sure as to if another fallen angel will target him. So I need you to do it. What's in it for us? Naruto asked. Rias looked shocked, you're extorting something out of me. Where we are from, this is a normal thing. Hell, this could be considered a B or A rank mission just because we are protecting him from someone with supernatural abilities. 
So, what's in it for us? Rias bit her lip. I'll send word to Ajuka Beelzebub to get started on your evil piece set. She offered. I'll have the two of you put in the same class and get my family to provide for you? Naruto smirked. That could be in sulfur monosulfide rank reward in itself. Done. Flashback over. You know you cheated her on that deal, Hanabi chided him. Naruto shrugged. We're shinobi, he told her. We do stuff like this on a daily basis. And hey, thanks to that we don't have to waste our money. Hanabi relented this point, then gave him a kiss on the cheek as the bell rang. Come on Naru-kun, let's get to class. Kuo Academy. Class 3A. 9 AM. If one were to try and count the amount of girls and guys drooling over the two new students at the front of the class, they would find only two people were not doing either, though light blush did dust their cheeks. The teacher held up a hand, pointing to the students. These are the two new students joining us today, he told them. Please give them a big welcome, could you introduce yourselves? Certainly, Hanabi said, she looked towards the class and bowed slightly. My name is Hanabi Hayuga. I am 15, but I skipped a few grades. My likes are cinnamon buns, reading, proving myself to others, and of course my Naru-kun, she gave Naruto a kiss on the cheek, making the girls look at her in hatred. My dislikes involve fangirls, criminals, men who try to take advantage of women, and perverts. Except for my Naru-kun, he can be perverted with me all he wants, she thought. My hobbies involve training, spending time with Naru-kun, and finding new things. My goal is to be a well-respected person and to one day marry Naru-kun. Hello. Naruto waved at them with a charming smile. I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, 17. I like ramen, training, my friends and Hanabi here, he gave Hanabi a pat on the head, and she smiled softly. My dislikes include criminals, people that give in to the hatred inside of them, only Hanabi was the only one not confused by his statement, and the five minutes it takes to make instant ramen. My hobbies include training, hanging out with my friends and spending time with Hanabi. My dream. Naruto gained a distant look in his eyes. I guess it would be to be the best person I can. The teacher nodded. Mr. Uzumaki, please sit next to Miss Himahima. Miss Hayuga, sit next to Miss Gramori. Would the two of you raise your hands? Both Rias and Akino raised their hands for a moment before lowering them. Naruto walked past the class and sat next to Akino, while Hanabi sent him a wink before sitting down next to Rias. Now, could you please turn to page 57 of your textbooks? Hello. Akano whispered to Naruto politely, You're the one Bucko spoke about? Naruto glanced at Akano. So, Dachi was a member of Rias's peerage. That's right, Naruto said lowly. You are a devil also? Yes. I am Bukkao's queen. Naruto nodded. I hope we get along then, since we are most likely going to be seeing much of each other in the future. Akano nearly giggled at how blunt he was. Era era, I hope the same, Foxy Coon. The blonde shivered at the way she said that. It reminded him of one of the only women he would never ever mess with. Let it be known to the world, Anko Midarashi was Naruto's friend, but God could she scare him. Naruto hadn't even noticed he had used the Lord's name in his mind, but he felt no pain. Kuo Academy. 3.20 PM. Naruto and Hanabi were walking out of the school together, arm in arm, getting jealous glares from both men and women as the two stuck close by the other. Hanabi was clinging onto her boyfriend's arm as if he were her life support machine. Naruto smiled softly as he felt her warm up his body just by being near him, though maybe that was because he was getting turned on from her breasts pressing against his arm. Nay, Naru-kun? Yes Hanabi? The blonde responded. Why won't you call me Hanabi-chan? She pouted. Naruto patted her head. Too early in our relationship for that Hanabi. Be patient, we'll get there. Hanabi nodded in understanding. With how it ended up between him and Hanada, it was no wonder that he wanted to take things slow with her. She saw Issei out the corner of her eye leaving the school with his two friends. Oi, he's on the move. Naruto nodded. Let's go. Naruto and Hanabi began to follow from a distance. All right guys, Naruto spoke mentally. Let's go to work. Karama, you keep out for negative emotions. A grunt from the biju told Naruto his request was acknowledged. Saiken, I want you to keep track of him by following his life energy. Understood Naruto, the six tails responded. Everyone else. I want you to keep your senses on red alert, Naruto informed them. We know it's possible to mask your evil intentions, so I need you to keep an eye out, so to speak, for any powerful or our threats. Roger. All the remaining demons spoke in harmony. Hanabi shook Naruto gently, breaking him out of his stupor. Naru-kun, Hanabi said in a worried voice. Are you okay? Ah, I'm fine Hanabi, Naruto promised. 
I was just talking with. Dot you know, he tapped the side of his head. Hanabi made an, oh, with her mouth before she nodded. She noticed Issei was starting to get away. Naru-kun, let's move. Naruto nodded. The two walked out of the school grounds. Dot and Naruto's eyes turned blood red. Let's get to work on protecting this moron. Motohama's house. 8.13 p.m. The perverted trio were truly living up to their name, as they were watching porn. Oh, Motohama said with a nosebleed, beautiful, this is truly a work of art. Matsuda cried anime tears. Yes, look at those tits. Issei, however, was a bit put off. He waved his hand in front of his eyes. Oi, could you turn the lights off? Matsuda looked to his fellow pervert in confusion. What, what are you talking about? The lights are off. The brown-haired boy looked up in surprise. E.H. Motohama frowned. You okay? I. Issei grabbed his head for a minute, before he slowly stood up. Hey, I'm gonna go. Dot not really in the mood for some reason. E.H. Motohama said confused as Issei left the room. Oi, Issei. But he didn't listen. He slipped on his shoes and bag, leaving the house. Issei grabbed his head as he walked. It was dark out. Dot but in his eyes, it was rather bright. What is going on? Oh, a deep voice said from behind him. Issei's body tensed immediately as he felt the danger and he whipped around. Standing there was what appeared to be a middle-aged man with grayish black hair. He wore a cloak that covered the majority of his body, and a pair of black gloves. On his head was a hat that shadowed his eyes. He looked dangerous. But that isn't what made Issei tremble. It was the two black feathered wings that jutted out his back as he hovered in midair. WH what the hell? Issei stumbled back. I wasn't expecting to encounter a devil here, the man said with an amused voice. And a stray. I am in luck. He held his hand to the side, and a shimmering spear appeared, made from a bluish light. WH what the fuck? Issei yelled as he once again stumbled back. Bye bye, shitty devil, the man smirked as he threw the spear. In that moment, Issei's life flashed before his eyes. His birth, growing up with his childhood friend Irina until he had to move away due to his dad getting a new job, entering school, meeting Motohama and Matsuda, first watching porn, smiling with his friends as they thought about their dreams. I don't want to die yet, Issei yelled out. A voice spoke from above him. I like that attitude, a figure landed in front of Issei and snatched the spear out of the air. The man's eyes widened as he backed up a little. What? H how could you touch my light spear without being hurt? Naruto just smirked as he flipped the light spear a few times. That isn't important old man, the blonde said happily. What is important is that? Naruto growled as the spear shattered in his hand. You pissed me off. His eyes shifted to a deep crimson, and a smirk came onto his lips as he let loose his power. A whirlpool of absolute strength that flowed out of him. He grunted and a pair of blood red feathered wings shot out his back, without damaging his uniform. The man felt his raw power and clutched his chest as the power suffocated him. S such strength, he screamed mentally. I it matches the signature that appeared when Rainair suddenly vanished. He can't be a devil though, his wings are feathered and red, wh what is he? You've got one chance, Naruto told him in a bored tone. Leave and live to fight another day. Or stay and die. The man's eyes widened as he could see that Naruto wasn't bluffing. Fine, I will retreat. Dot for now, the man growled. But next time you won't be so lucky. With a powerful flap, the man shot into the sky and disappeared from sight. Naruto chuckled as his wings retracted. He looked to Issei, who was sitting there in shock. WH what the? WH who are you? The blonde simply smiled before he walked over and whispered in his ear. Everything will be explained tomorrow. Enjoy your little awakening gift. He gave a quick chop to the back of Issei's neck, knocking out the devil immediately. He threw him over his shoulder. Hanabi, come out. Hanabi appeared in a whirlwind of leaves. You did a good job with the fallen angel, Naru-kun. Naruto nodded. We'll be heading to this moron's house to drop him off. The former heiress groaned. Do we have to? Yes, we promised Rias we would. Hanabi sighed and activated her by Kugan. I see a house not too far. The signatures are similar to his. Naruto nodded and the two sped off to the house. Naruto quietly appeared in the brown-haired boy's room, dropping him on his bed then placed a piece of paper on the ground. It glue red before Rias appeared. She looked to Issei. Good job, she said with a smile. I take it you'll be at the club room tomorrow? Naruto laughed without humor. You make it sounds like we actually have a choice. Rias giggled. Yes, I suppose that's true. I'll see you tomorrow Naruto. The Jinchuriki turned as the red head began to strip. See ya. He vanished in a yellow flash. Rias pouted. 
I gotta know how he does that. Naruto and Hanabi's house, 8.30 p.m. Naruto walked down the basement of the house, Hanabi following close behind him, and the two looked at the form of the fallen angel known as Rainer. She was laying on the ground, covered in her juices from non-stop orgasms. She was naked and her wings were soaked. She looked at Naruto with pure affection and love, dot and lust. Are you well, Rainer? Naruto asked kindly. Ha, huh, she moaned, just the voice of the blonde turning her on immensely. Yes Naruto-sama. Naruto sat opposite her while she sat on a chair, masturbating as she stared at him, panting lustfully. Naruto was serious however, and didn't pay attention. Hanabi looked a little annoyed at the fallen angel. Are you ready to talk? Rainer nodded. Anything to make her Naruto-sama happy. Who sent you to kill Issei? Rainer moaned as she started playing with her breasts as well. K. Kokabil, another fallen angel who was ASS Seraphim before he fell. He wants to start a war between the three facti o n n n s s s s She screamed out as she had another orgasm. Naruto nodded. Why did he want Issei dead? Rainer sucked her own breasts as she responded. He suspected that Issei had a powerful shaker gear that would be a threat to his planche. The blonde nodded slowly. I see. He stood and patted the fallen angel's head. Good girl, you have done me proud. Naruto didn't want to this to anyone, but it was the only way he could get information out of her without torturing her. Making her a member of his, well, group of wives seemed like the best choice. It would be even better if he was able to fall in love with her. Her just needed patience. Rainer moved her head in motion with his arm, burring her head into his chest. Naruto was surprised by the sudden movement, but put an arm on her back and patted it. Rainer looked into his eyes, and Kurama cast the illusion once more, causing her to fall to the ground and moan in pleasure. Naruto stood, turning around and leaving the room with Hanabi hot on his heels. Kokebil huh? Naruto mumbled. A fallen seraphim, Hanabi continued for him. I wonder why he wants to start a war. Naruto hummed in thought. I wonder as well. Dot but for now, we have no information on him. I hope he isn't as strong as Madara was. I do not want to go through all of that again. Hanabi hugged the blonde as they walked into their room. It's okay Naru-kun. You won't be alone. We'll beat him together and make him regret ever falling from heaven in the first place. The Jinchuriki nodded, his blue eyes seeming to glow as he took off his clothes, only his shirt and boxers remaining as he lay down in the bed. Hanabi quickly turned and stripped to her panties, slipping on her tank top as she slid into bed and cuddled up to her boyfriend. To get to peace. Naruto sighed. You sometimes need to deal pain. Hanabi nodded and closed her lavender eyes as she drifted off to sleep. Naruto closed his soon after, and as he fell asleep, he swore he heard a voice that did not belong to any of the biju. The end. Thanks for watching. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.